quantitative chemistry. So these are the topics that we'll cover in this Avogadro's number. Huge number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd per mole. So if you had a mole of grains of sand, it would cover the state of Texas to a depth of 15 meters. So we need this number because it's easier to work with in the macro world. You, you can't put one water molecule in a beaker, but you could put a mole of water, right, 18.02 grams in a beaker. So the mole provides a connection between the number of moles in a pure sample and the number of particles or units in that sample. The mass of one mole of any element is equal to the atomic, atomic mass on the periodic table in grams. So one carbon atom has a mass of 12 AMU, and one mole of carbon atoms has a mass of 12 grams. And one AMU equals 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. So someone, I don't remember who, already did this conversion for y'all, and that's what we put on the periodic table. So it's the same for molecules as well. One water molecule has a mass of 18 AMU, and 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules, or one mole of water molecules, has a mass of 18 grams. So how many moles of so uh, sodium chloride are there in 48 grams of sodium chloride? So you always start with what they give you. The problem gave you 48 grams, so that's what I'm going to start with. And then you're going to use your conversion factors. And we can make a list of, of known conversion factors in class, but one of them is uh, molar mass. So then molar mass, you want to set up your units so that they're diagonal from each other and that they will cancel. Then you multiply across the top, divide by what's on the bottom, and we started with two sig figs, so we're going to end up with two sig figs. How many grams of ethane are there in 18.7 moles of ethane? So I always start with what they give me. They gave me 18.7 moles. I'm going to use molar mass to cancel out my moles, multiply across the top, divide by what's on the bottom. And I started with three significant figures, so that's what I'm going to end up with converting from grams to molecules. So how many water molecules are contained within a 56 gram pure sample of water molecules? So um, I start with what they give me, 56 grams. If I have grams, I need molar mass to go from grams to moles, and then I can use Avogadro's number to go from moles to molecules. Multiply across the top, divide by what's on the bottom. I started with two sig figs, so I need two sig figs in my answer. How many hydrogen atoms are contained within a 56 gram pure sample of water? So I start with what they give me. They gave me 56 grams in the problem, grams to moles using molar mass, moles to molecules using Avogadro's number, and then I know in from the uh, molar ratio, not molar ratio, I guess, um, compound, for every two hydrogen atoms, there's one oxygen atom, so in one molecule water there's two atoms of hydrogen. I have two sig figs. I need two sig figs. Conservation of atoms in chemical reactions. So whatever we start with over here, we have to end up with over here. It can be rearranged though. Um, and these are particulate jar. This is a particulate drawing of a chemical equation which y'all will have to do. So I have one carbon here. I need one carbon here. I have four hydrogen here, I've got four hydrogen here. I have four oxygen here, I have two plus two over here is four. So you also conserve mass in your chemical reactions. If we added up all these on the product side, they have to equal, I'm sorry, on the reactant side, they have to equal what is on the product side. Predicting mass of products. So what mass of water is produced when a car burns 246.4 grams of methane? So you're gonna have, you would have to write the balanced equation and then convert to the mass of water using your molar ratio, your coefficients in your equation. <clears throat> so you start with what they gave you in the problem, 246.4 grams of methane, molar mass of methane to get to moles. Then you're gonna use your molar ratio your coefficients from your balanced equation to switch between compounds. So that will get you to moles of water. Molar mass will get you to grams of water. I had four sig figs. I need four sig figs. How many grams of carbon dioxide and iron are produced 
when 114 grams of carbon monoxide gas is added to a vessel containing excess hot iron 3 oxide. So write your balanced equation, and then you're going to find um, the masses of both products that are produced. So they gave us our starting material. So in this first problem, I'm going to go from 14 grams of carbon monoxide to grams of carbon dioxide. Then I'm going to set up a new problem. I still have to start with what they give me, 114 grams of carbon monoxide convert to grams of iron oxide. I'm sorry, of just iron. What mass of sodium bicarbonate is needed to produce 32 grams of sodium carbonate? So again, 32 grams, that's what I started with. Molar mass, molar ratio, molar mass. I had two sig figs. So in my answer, I have two sig figs. If you have set quantities of two different reactants, one is going to get up, get used up before the other one, and you'll have leftover of your other one. That's called your excess. So your limiting reactant is the one that limits how far the reaction will proceed and how much product you'll make. The excess reactant is what will be left over when the reaction is complete. So what is the limiting reactant when 28 grams of glucose reacts with 14 grams of oxygen gas? So we'll do that one first, and then we'll figure out what mass of carbon dioxide is produced. So first you write your balance equation. Then you're going to find the mass of carbon dioxide that would be produced by each reactant. And so that one was for oxygen. Okay, now we're going to compare the two masses that were produced. The reactant that produced the smallest quantity of the product is the limiting reactant. So oxygen is the limiting reactant. So we could only get 19 grams of carbon dioxide in theory. So that's our theoretical yield. So here's your equation for your percent yield. Uh, find the percent yield if only 15 grams of carbon dioxide were produced in the previous problem. So this is your actual yield, like this is what you would get if you're doing the lab. Your theoretical yield is what you get when you do the math from the balanced chemical equation. That's your stoichiometry. All right, here are the homework problems that you'll need to try. We'll check them in class.